Go ahead and be seated. We are going to jump back in this morning to our series on the presence of God. And so you can turn in your Bibles to Exodus 3, but while you're doing that and before we go any farther, I want to, I want to highlight two things really fast. Uh, on Thursday night and Friday, Carlos, you can go to those pictures, we had the opportunity, all of you know we've been sent out by City Bible Church up in Portland. Uh, we had the opportunity to host a City Bible Church Network. And this is all these churches that are a part of City Bible Church, either being sent out or being brought in. And, and we had the honor of hosting them here Thursday night and Friday. And we just got a, uh, this, is, this is from uh, Thursday night where we just got to hang out and have a dinner with them. They had people from uh, Indonesia and Washington and uh, I don't even know the other kind. There, there was uh, Cambodia, like everywhere. We, we had people from all over, and we just got a fellowship and hang out and just be together as a family. Go to the next one, Carlos. And uh, this, was, this was teaching that we were able to, to receive from uh, Pastor Daryl, one of our elders, Pastor Mark, who you heard uh, last weekend, and a few others, and just really hang out and be refreshed and strengthened as, as pastors and, and, and church planters. But uh, the reason I'm showing you this is, Debbie and Greg, where are you at? Debbie and Greg, stand up. These two uh, worked tirelessly uh, last week and the week before leading up to it to make the dinner look what it was, to plan the food, to make the atmosphere what it was. Can we put our hands together for them and thank them? <clears throat> on, on top of that, hang on, Debbie, you're not done. On, on top of that, they, uh, they didn't just... Um, it's funny because one of the things we, we had the privilege to be in at the City Bible Church ret- Leaders Retreat at Eagle Crest this week, and one of the things they talked about was as, as pastors and shepherds, if, you, if you're over an area, your job is not to, to do it all yourself. Your job is to bring people from the outside in and, uh, and help. And so they, they had Teresa here helping. Teresa, where are you at? I saw you earlier. She's right there helping. Olita was here helping. Kelly was here helping. Kelly, where are you at? Oh, I, she's in kids, actually. But the, the point is, they, they reached out and brought people in to help and serve. And we just had an amazing time. So Debbie and Greg, thank you so much. It was amazing. The feedback's been amazing. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> and then most of you know, Javi and Teresa, stand right up real fast. They started their Hispanic small group last night. And the uh, uh, Bible says, do not dis- despise the days of small beginnings. And even though it may have been small in number, we did have a salvation last night. Can somebody say amen? And so that is just the first fruit of what is going to come forth from, from the ministry and just pouring out into the Hispanic people of this church that we can't, we can't shepherd, but they can't because they understand the language. And, and just this morning, I got a phone call from somebody wanting to find out more about it. And so the, the ball is rolling. Can somebody say amen? amen. And then uh, this week, we celebrate uh, the 4th of July. It's our independence. It's the birth of this great country. And I want to make special honor to where honor is due. Uh, Daryl's dad, Daryl, where are you at? Where are you at? Right there, Daryl. He was the one playing the guitar up here. Daryl's dad, Bill, is a World War II veteran. Uh, Bill, where are you at? Bill, will you stand up so we can honor you? Is he, he's in the bathroom? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. It's going to be super awkward because I'll be probably right in the middle of a really great point when he walks in. But when he walks in, can we stand to our feet and honor him? And, and if you're a veteran here, uh, current or past, will you stand up real fast so we can honor you? There's people all over this place that are. Don't be shy. Thank you very much. We praise God for you. This is a great time, a great country, but I just want to, I just want to make special mention of, of, of Bill because that, that's an incredible incredible thing. So we'll, we'll pause and honor him when he, when he comes in. And if Daryl, if I don't see him come in, just throw something at me <laughs> or just randomly stand up and then we'll know. <laughs> so Exodus chapter three, we're going to bounce back into our series on the presence of God. And uh, first of all, how many of you were blessed last week by Pastor Mark when he was here talking about Imagine and taking us to a new level? That was, that was just an incredible time. But I want to I want to talk to you this morning about making a place for his presence, making a place for his presence. And if you remember in in Exodus chapter 3, Moses has this encounter with the burning bush and he's in the presence of God. And and it's at this time that Moses' whole life changes and uh, the direction of his life changes. And and last, uh, when we started the series, we talked about this idea of 
how the presence of God, when we encounter the presence of God, it changes us, it transforms us, it, it does all these different things. And um, the presence of God is something we desire and long for simply because that is what he desires. He desires us to be in his presence. He desires to come and dwell among us. He, he desires to come and hang out with us. But, but there's certain things we have to do in our life to position ourselves to make a place for his presence. And it all starts, if you remember in our David series, we had the whiteboard up here and uh, we had the, the IVP deal, the intimacy, the value, the purpose. And it was, and it was yeah, there he is, Bill. Thank you for your service. He's been visiting from California. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. We just wanted to honor you. <clears throat> that's incredible. World, I've never met a World War II veteran before, so that's, that's amazing. So thank you. We had the whiteboard up here talking about IVP, intimacy, value, purpose, and and it's that place of intimacy that we have to get to that allows us to make a place for the presence of God. We can say all the things we want to do. We can act this way and we can, we can read, read it. But if it's not a place of intimacy and just actions, we will never make a place for the presence of God. And God's desire is to, just to be with us. And, and I love what A.W. Tozer said. He said it this way. He said, the presence of God is our right and proper dwelling place. Let me say that again. The presence of God is our right and proper dwelling place. Our, we were created to be in the presence of God. We were created to be in with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is why we were created to be on this earth. We were to, created to be in his presence. And here we have God the Father in heaven that created us saying, I want to be with you, I want to dwell with you, I'm ready, but he can't force his way in, which is why the intimacy piece of the IVP setup is so critical in our life. And that starts with our time in the morning, and it starts in our time in, in prayer, and in worship, and in our word, and, and it's when we start there. Not only are we making a place for his presence, but then we're walking in and with his presence everywhere we go. And somebody asked uh, when we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago as I was leading up to is why, why is it so important to be in his presence? And, and there's a lot of reasons to be in his presence, but do you know that it's when we're in his presence that God can manifest? God can manifest in us. God can manifest through us. God can manifest around us. And you can just be in a place and have to say nothing and do nothing, but because you're so into his presence, things happen around you. Just when you're in a place, people will get healed. Just when you're in an atmosphere, people will be changed and touched and transformed because your day is spent in his presence. And I looked up the word manifest and it was, it was a very interesting definition. There's two definitions I really like. The one is clear and obvious. So when you're in the presence of God, it's when he begins to manifest over your life and he begins to say some pretty clear and obvious things about you, about your life. Maybe you're searching for direction. Maybe you've been praying for something for so long and you don't know when it's going to come through or you don't know when the answer's coming. But it's in your, when you're in his presence, he begins to speak to you. There's a connection to the, to the supernatural plug of the Holy Spirit. He begins to download things to you, and things become obvious. They become clear. You begin to understand them a little bit better. And all of a sudden, the pathway for your life opens up, and now you, you have an understanding of what God is asking you to do. The second definition is to display or show. Display or show. He's going to begin to display his healing power through you, around you. Maybe, maybe you're struggling with something in your physical body. Maybe it's a neck thing. Maybe it's a back thing. Maybe it's a, a, a knee thing. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's eyes. Maybe it's a whole range of things. When you're in his presence and you're just being there with him, waiting for him to download something to you is when he begins to manifest over your life and all of a sudden 
your knee feels better, your back feels better, your, your, your struggles are, are gone, you don't have the same things anymore. Or maybe you, you're in his presence and you hear somebody at the store saying, I'm struggling with this, and you just simply touch their shoulder and say, Jesus wants to heal you, and they're healed. Why? Because he's beginning to manifest himself in you because you and I have all power and all authority to do exactly what Jesus has called us to do. When we read in the Bible and the New Testament all these people that were healed and raised from the dead and blind eyes open and he says, silver and gold have I none, what I have I give to you. And he grabs them by the hand, picks them up and he starts walking in Jesus' name. You've got that power. But it takes that time of intimacy in his presence making room for his presence, making a place for his presence, that God's manifestation power begins to operate on your life, move in your life, move around your life. And this is why making a place for his presence is so important because you and I are carriers of his presence, are carriers of his goodness, are carriers of his love, are carriers of the anointing. And when Jesus went to heaven, Jesus didn't just go to heaven and go, man, I hope this place is in good hands. He went to heaven saying, I've given them everything they need, every tool, all power, all authority, all anointing. And he goes a step farther and says, greater things will you do. Now that's, that thought to me is so crazy because the things Jesus did was pretty amazing, was pretty incredible. But he says, if you come to a place of intimacy with me and you come to making room for my presence, all the stuff you heard about, you will do, but greater. It's time that we as the body of Christ begin to understand that the presence of God is where we need to be in order to do all that God has for us. If you're, if you're here this morning and you're struggling with that, that call or that you're wondering how, when, and where, and why, and what if. Just go to his presence. There's, there's the answer. There's the power. There's the authority. There's all you need. It's in his presence. The Bible says in his presence there's, there's a fullness of joy and, and strength and rest and salvation and healing and answers. If you need something, get back to his presence. We are people that get so uh, uh, distracted with life and so worried about how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen or this, that, and the other thing that we try to do it all on our own, it's God saying, just come back into my presence. It's so simple, but yet we make it so hard. And it's in his presence that, that his power will begin to manifest and, and, and his goodness begins to show off in you, around you, and through you. We're carriers of his presence. Um, as, as I was kind of going through this, I, ca I came across some quotes that I want to share with you this morning that I thought uh, uh, painted a beautiful picture of what it meant to, to, to make a place for his presence. And, and I love A.W. Tozer. If you've ever read his book on prayer, like there, there are short sections throughout that book, but it's an incredible book. And he says, it's not mere words that nourish the soul but God himself. And unless or until the hearers, which is you and I, find God in a personal experience, in a personal encounter, we are not better for having heard the truth. We can hear all we want, we can study all we want, but unless we position ourselves in his presence, none of that matters. Because it's in his presence that he's going to come and encounter you and change you. Another, another author wrote, prayer is so simple. It is quietly opening a door and slipping into the very presence of God. It's so simple just to be there in prayer and sit in his presence. Pastor Mark said at, the, at, at our retreat this week that prayer is the vehicle that moves the very heart of God. It's through prayer that we will begin to encounter his presence. It's through prayer that we begin to hear what God has for your life and begins to change you and transform you. 
And I want to encourage you. Who was that prayer Wednesday night? Who was that prayer Wednesday? Yeah, there was about 20 of us there, I think. And let me tell you something. When we do not rush through prayer, God shows up on the scene. Just the week before, two weeks ago, both Bill and Karen said at different times, Bill whispered it to my ear, Karen said it out loud, we need to move prayer to two hours because it's too short. And then you're trying, okay, let's, let's force it, let's make it happen. But when we presented ourselves as a unified body and just presented ourselves and said, God, we're here to seek your face and to, and to pray, we just want your presence, the anointing fell. There was deliverance that happened. People were healed. People were changed. People were transformed. Libby, you were there. You, you can attest to it. It was, it, it was a prayer meeting. And two hours later, we went home. And we were like, that was all? Why? God began to speak. God began to reveal. God began to touch people. Because prayer is so simple, but it's the very thing that moves the heart of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then all the stuff happens. It's through prayer. The presence of God is a place where things happen. I want to give you 11 things that take place as a result of being in his presence or making room for his presence. If we make room for his presence, these things will happen. Number one, it's a place of covenant and of blessing. A place of covenant and of blessing. Genesis 17, 1 through 2, I am the Almighty God. And this is God talking to Abraham. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make a covenant between me and you, and you will multiply exceedingly. When we're in his presence, there is blessing. When we're in his presence, there's covenant. God comes down and meets you. And, and, and even if you didn't, going back to prayer Wednesday night because it's so fresh and so amazing, even if you didn't get prayer for, for something, maybe you were just there observing or watching, everybody left blessed. Why? Because his presence was there. But it takes a tangible effort on our part to make a room for his presence. The second thing about making room for his presence is it's a place of intercession. Psalms 27, 8, when you, you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Intercession is not just a, a Lord, bless this food, amen, Lord, bless this day, amen. Intercession is never ceasing. You never stop. It's a continuing action. When you make room for his presence, you go to a new level in prayer. You go to a new level in, in seeking his face. All you care about is seeking the face of the Father. That's what it means to make room for his presence. That's what it means for intercession. True prayer is the language of a soul desperately breathing after God. Intercession is a hunger. It's a desire. You're, you're running after him. The praying spirit is a search for the presence of God and continued craving. Say continued craving. Say it again, continued craving. Intercession is our way of saying, God, I can't do it on my own. I'm trusting you to, to supply all my needs. This is what happens when we make room for his presence. If we don't make room for his presence and just show up to prayer, we're just doing actions. We're just making noise. We're just doing it because it's on the, the religious tick list to do. Making room for his presence is, is us coming and surrendering to him and saying, God, I need you. God, I desire you. God, come and transform me. Come and speak to me. And it's in those moments of intercession where he begins to download things to you. He begins to say things to you. He begins to change your life and transform your life. Things happen. Another thing that happens when we make a place for his presence is it's a place of brokenness before God. 
I love the words that came this morning because sometimes when we're broken, we're ashamed. Sometimes when we're broken, we feel like we failed. Sometimes we, when we're broken, we feel like we can't do anything anymore. But it's our brokenness in its presence that, that is actually different. Jeremiah 18, 2 through 6. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, Oh, house of Israel, look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. When we come to him as a broken vessel, it's very simply the potter taking us and shaping us and molding us. I love the song we sang this morning, New Wine, because it's in our brokenness in his presence that new wine comes forth. Because God's not done with you just because you're broken. He's just beginning. But it takes a certain level of surrender and humility to come before him in our broken state. And it's when that happens that he takes the ashes in our life and turns them into something beautiful, glorious, spectacular, and now you're set forth to do something great for him. Maybe you're here this morning struggling with the brokenness that's in your life. Maybe you're using the brokenness in your life as an excuse not to press forward in the things that God has for you. Can I remind you this morning that he is the potter and you are the clay? If you've ever seen clay before its form, it's a pile of nothing. It's just, it's sticky, it's gross. But then the potter gets his hands on it and begins to form it and begins to shape it and take something so ugly and turns it into something so beautiful. We all at one point in our lives were broken, but then Jesus went to the cross so that out of the death, new life can come. And that is what he's doing in our life. But when we make a place for his presence... Your brokenness is not a shameful thing. It's the very vehicle that God is going to use to make something new. To take the ugly and turn it into beautiful. To take the useless and turn it into something useful. This is what happens when we present our brokenness before him. But it's in his presence. When we surrender, when we humble, it starts with intimacy. If you don't have the aspect of intimacy in your life, you will never be able to confidently go to him with your brokenness. What what does the Bible say? Hebrews 4.16. We can now boldly come before the throne room. Why? Because when Jesus went to the cross, when he hung on that tree, All the stuff in your life, all the brokenness, all the shame, all the guilt was put away. The veil was torn and now we have access to come before him exactly as you are. And it's when we come boldly before the throne room, he can begin to shape you and change you and transform you. Your brokenness is not a bad thing. Number four, it's a place of mercy. It's a place of mercy. Exodus 25, 22. I will meet with you. I will speak with you from the mercy seat. We serve a God that is powerful and mighty and sitting on the throne forever and ever. And even when he's on the throne, he is still talking with us with mercy, with grace, with love. This is, I love it. Number five, making a place for his presence is a place of relationship. A place of relationship. Exodus 33, 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. That's a friend of God. As a man speaks to his friend, God is here. He wants to have relationship with you. He wants to speak with you. He wants to dine with you. He wants to hang out with you. He wants to be around you. Deuteronomy 34.10, but since then there has not 
risen in Israel, a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. This is how God wants to know you. This is how God wants to know me. This is how God wants to commune with us, his people. In order for this to happen, though, it's surrender and it's intimacy. Because as long as we're trying to write our own story, God can't write his story. And his story for your life is far greater than my story for my life. And it's when we surrender ourselves and humble ourselves and make room for his presence, he's going to come and have relationship with you. He's going to come and, and pour into your life and make a download into your life and say things to you and change you and transform you. Surrender and intimacy allows room for his presence. And you'll hear the word intimacy and surrender out of this church a lot. Because it's the very foundation to get to all that God has for us. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's not, a, uh, it's not a, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday deal. It's not a Sunday deal. It's not a let's run it for 30 days and then we'll see how we feel. It's a, it's a daily thing. It's a daily we're surrendering ourselves and, and having this moment with God so he can speak to us and download to us and and move in your life and answer some things that you might be struggling with. So it's a, it's a place of relationship. Number six, it's a place of joy and rejoicing. His presence is a place of joy and rejoicing. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life and in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. When we make room for his presence and make a place for his presence, your mourning turns into dancing. Your weeping turns into laughing. Your sorrow turns into joy. If you're, if you're depressed, discouraged, uncertain about life and just don't want to go on anymore, get back in his presence. Make room for his presence because there's joy and not just joy once off. The Bible says joy forevermore. Forevermore. It's an ongoing joy. It's not a joy that, that runs out at the end of the month or at the end of this year. And then you've got to reset. It's a joy forevermore. But we've got to make room for his presence. Number eight. It's a place of transformation. Oh, sorry. I skipped one. Seven, yes. Seven wasn't that big of a deal. Number seven, when we make place for his presence, every impossible circumstance you're facing melt away like wax. Psalms 97, 5, the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Luke 18, 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. If you're dealing with something impossible this morning, get into the presence because they will melt away like wax and they will flow away quicker than you can count to three. But it's in his presence. What impossible things are you facing this morning? What doctor's report are you dealing with this morning? What relationship are you dealing with this morning? What, what prayer are you dealing with this morning? What prodigal son or daughter or, or spouse or grandparent or cousin or niece or nephew or friend or coworker that seems impossible are you dealing with morning? Bring it before the throne in his presence because they will all melt away in the presence of the Lord. Because with God, everything, all things. I am so glad Scripture doesn't say that with God some things are possible. Only sickness is possible. Only this is possible. Only when you fast so long is it possible. It simply says everything, all things are possible. But we got to make a place for His presence. We got to be in His presence. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Number eight, it's a place of transformation. It's a place of transformation. Exodus 34, 29 through 30. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, 
the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. When we are in the presence of the Lord, transformation, power happens over your life. You talk differently, you act differently, you breathe differently, you think differently, you are different. When you go to work, because the presence is on you, because you've allowed his spirit to transform you and change you and shape you, your coworkers are going to begin to ask questions. So if you don't like to speak, get ready, because it's a coming. But all you have to do is, the I am sent me. His spirit will come upon you. And the words that you need to say, the words that you need to communicate will just flow through you. Because you've been with him. You've been with him. Number nine, it's a place of refreshing. Acts 3.19, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Bernice and I have been in a season where we're, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're tired. And maybe you're in a season of tired and just you don't know how you're going to go on another day or take that next step. When you get back into his presence and worship and word, he will refresh you with his spirit. He will speak to you with that still small voice. And all of a sudden, you have new energy for a new day. Because his mercies are new every day. But it's in your, his presence. It's not sleep. It's not uh, a vacation in Hawaii Although it might, I don't know, maybe you'll try it. No, no more. It's too many out of you. It's when you're in his presence that he can come refresh you. We are physically tired, but when we get physically tired, our spiritual body gets tired. And the only way to refresh our spiritual body is to spend time with Jesus. It's, allow, it's, 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 it's him coming and just speaking to you and praying over you and ministering to you. That's what happens when we go to his presence. You get refreshed. As your spirit man is refreshed, so is your physical man refreshed. Number 10, it's a place of worship. It's a place of worship. Psalms 22.3, but you are Holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. I'm going to change that up. You are holy, enthroned in the praises of Redmond, in the praises of Madras, of Prineville, of Bend, of Central Oregon. You're enthroned in the praises of, Israel, of Ignite Faith Church. Psalms 95, 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Psalms 102, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. The reward of worship, the benefit of worship, your treasure box of worship is God's enthroned presence in your midst, in our midst, in the city. I'll read the quote again I read during worship. When you turn your worry into worship, when you turn your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your doubt into worship, God will turn your battles into blessings, into victories, into healing, into overcoming, into something you've never seen before. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. When we come before his presence with worship, get ready, something's getting ready to break forth, amen? Amen. Lastly, number 11. Lastly, number 11. It's a place of release for the prophetic word. It's a place of release for the prophetic word. Very simply put, it's a place for God to speak to you. It's a place for God to speak to you. First Samuel 3, 9 through 10, and we all know the story, but it says Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, 
for your servant hears. The idea of the prophetic scares people because people uh, are, are worried about it. They don't know what's going to come forth. But may I remind you, the idea of the prophetic is not for condemnation and guilt and shame, but it's to build up and edify and communicate the very word that God has for you, his son and his daughter. Do not shy away from the prophetic word. When you're in his presence, God will speak to you. If you don't like the prophetic word, the way it's phrased, then it's very simply put, in his presence, God will speak to you. It's God revealing something to you for now, for such a time as this. And he uses other people to communicate that word, so be listening. When we were in prayer Wednesday night, when we were there just praying for each other and for the city and for this church, God began to speak to people for people in that circle and freedom was had Friday night because God was there. And he began to use his vessels, you and I, to communicate something. He, he used his vessels, you and I, to communicate his heart for somebody. And the beautiful thing is, the brokenness we talked about earlier, God still wants to speak to you for somebody. God is still going to speak to somebody so they can speak to you. It's up to us to have our ears open, our minds open. When we make a place for his presence, his voice can be heard clearly and loudly. And it's to build you up. It's to communicate his love, his power, his care for you. It's never to rip you down. It's never to harm you. It's never to hurt you. If somebody ever came up to you and says, thus says the Lord, if you don't do this, God is going to kill you with an axe, I would run as fast as I could the other way. But if somebody comes to you and says, the Lord of Lord to you is, I love you. And the situation you're in now, lift up your eyes because victory is drawing near. Embrace it. And maybe you're here this morning and you're in a place of, God, I just need to hear your voice. God, I need to get out of the place I'm at. When are you going to speak to me? I can prophesy to you with my eyes open. God loves you. He hasn't forgot about you. He hasn't changed his mind on you. You're not too broken. You're not too damaged. You're not too messed up. But he's saying, come into my presence and let me shape you. Let me mold you. Because that plan that I had for you way back in Jeremiah 1, before your parents were together, before your parents' parents were together, that plan I had before you at the formation of the earth is still for you today. Let's stand together this morning.